Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to bring you a cool podcast about joint ventures and how the first one I ever did got started. Um, but the the f- one thing I've been working on, I'm doing the final edits of my small group marketing book. I wrote it most of last year, and um, I got it back from the editor, and I read through it again, and I just, you know, I wasn't happy with certain parts of how it came out. So, of course, the perfectionist in me, which isn't good, uh, is going back in and I rewrote a couple chapters and everything like that. So should be coming out next month, but I'm super excited. The title of it is The Ultimate Guide to Small Group Personal Training. It's the really third or fourth book. I can't I think it's the fourth book in a series, The Ultimate Guide series. And uh, I'm super excited about this one. I went deep down the rabbit hole. It's a, little more, it's a longer book, uh, one of the longest books I've written so far. Um, but I'm really excited about it and hopefully it'll be out, um, very soon. Um, so stay tuned and how you can get a free copy when it comes out. But, um, I want to talk today about joint ventures. Um, one of the, before I ran one Facebook ad, first Facebook ad I ran was 200, 2016, and before that, my business lived on community stuff. And I mean, I never was taught how to do this. This was all instinctual for me. It was like, I was like a man possessed running around my community in my pickup truck, trying to get as much business as I could. That was like it. It was like, literally, I know like the whole passion thing is so overrated, but you know, I, I really do think that it was just like, I was just passionate about what I did. I was committed to being successful. And I was, you know, at the time, it's like almost like you, you didn't know what you don't know. It's like, you do, yeah, I was so like blind to everything else. It's almost like I wasn't uh, uh, embarrassed or anxious. I just like went. And uh, it's funny, I feel like I have more embarrassment and anxiousness today than I did back then. But it was like so naive back in the day. Um, but anyway, a lot, I, some of the things I did, I did some really stupid things back in the day, but I read, did some really good things. And, um, one of the things that probably put me on the map was this seminar series I used to do with a, um, orthopedic surgeon. He was a, he was one of the, one of the more renowned orthopedic surgeons in our area. And, uh, he had been the team doc for a professional sports team before. He was very well known. Everyone knew his name. And I had seen him as a kid. I like had an injury. I can't remember what it was, but an injury and I seen him as a kid. And, um, I randomly just remembered him and I just called his office and I talked to his secretary. She wouldn't put me through to him, or not secretary, but like assistant, whatever. And um, she didn't put me through to him. And she's like, well, how can I help you? And I was like, well, I'm starting to work with a lot of athletes. And at the time I was working with athletes doing post rehab ACL. Um, and so like they would come to me like after their physical therapy was done and I had to kind of bridge the gap, turn to play type stuff. And I had like not many clients, one or two clients doing it, but I still didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I wanted to get help. And I had seen Eric Cressy, um, who did this a lot with shoulders. I heard him, I wrote, I read a blog post where he said he went into a surgery room to watch a shoulder surgery. I was like, that's, well, Eric's really smart. So I'm just going to do what he does. And so, um, that's what I asked. I asked, I was like, Hey, I'm doing this. Is there any way that I could watch an ACL surgery? Um, I want to just learn more about the knee. And the, I guess the nurse asked him and he said, yes, I don't need, he definitely didn't remember who it was. I mean, he's probably seen, you know, thousands and thousands of kids, right? So he didn't remember who it was, but he just, I guess, kind of heard that this was a personal trainer in the area that was interested in learning and, you know, he let me in. And so I got there and they scrubbed me up. Like they put me, they put the scrubs on me and I had these booties on my feet and shoes and everything like that. And I didn't realize, I thought I was going to watch from like behind the glass or, or something like that. But they put me like right in there and they introduced me to him like right before the surgery. And I, I'm telling you, bro, it, this, I, ugh, man, 
this was like more of a construction project than than a surgery. Like this is this was anyone that's ever had surgery that's been under you have no idea what happened to your body while they were doing it. They were hammering and sawing. It was like like violent. It was crazy. Like I, I had no idea it was like this. And so I'm watching the surgery and my eyes are like bugging on my head. And he's like, at one point, he like brings me over and he's like, Evans, come here, look at this. Come here, he's a really good guy. And uh, so he brings me like right up to the knee and I'm like, he's like, look at this. And he shows me, opens the knee up and shows me the thing. And everything's kind of on a screen. So he's showing me on a screen. And um, I looked down at one point and um, my, my feet were like in this pool of blood. There was like blood all over the floor. And it wasn't like pure red blood, like a murder scene. It was like mixed with some kind of like fluid or something. But it was like, I looked down and there's just red everywhere on my feet. And I'm like, this is crazy, dude. And so anyways, afterwards, he gave me like five minutes and he talked to me for a little bit. And he was just like, yeah, that's great. I'm glad you're, you know, doing good work and everything like that. Um, He's like, yeah, I'll start sending you some people if you're. And I think the point was. He's like, if this is a personal trainer that's interested in um, coming in to watch a surgery, this is someone really committed to the clients that he's working with. So I think he saw that. And uh, I legitimately really was, at this point, I was so interested in learning. I definitely wanted to grow my business, but I was also interested in it. I was a junkie for this stuff. Um, And it was crazy. Like, all of a sudden, this guy started sending me, like, everybody. Like to the point where my, I had one-on-one clients too. And I was like, my one-on-one schedule got booked like really, really fast. Cause this guy started signing me. He just was seeing people every day that needed this. And I wasn't even just getting post rehab ACL. I was getting, and honestly too, it, one of the reasons why, and, and this is a whole nother business lesson, but I ended up getting sued by one of the people he referred to me and the, the, what happened was he referred me someone that you know, was having 20 years of problems. And anytime someone's got 20 years of problems, there's, there's also emotional things going with it. Right. Um, and it ended up, you know, great in the beginning, right? Totally. This person's like, this is a miracle. And I can't believe this. I have had 20 different trainers and never felt like this. And like, everything's going great. Then all of a sudden something went wrong and had nothing to do with the knee. And, um, I got sued. So literally one year into business, I got freaking sued, which was horrible. That's a whole nother podcast. But you know, when I talk about like feeling like a grizzled veteran, you know, in this business being in it almost, you know, business owner for 17 years, but being in the fitness industry for over 20 something, um, I've seen a lot of stuff and I just am one of the unlucky ones that ended up getting sued their first year in business. And so, I mean, I really wish it was like now because I'm much more prepared. <laughs> like I thought I was going to go out of business. Like it was awful. Like I'm not going to get into it. Um, but anyway, I, so I started getting all these clients and, and one of the things I thought I was like, okay, this guy is an unbelievable fuel source for me. I want to keep this going. And so what I did was I asked him if he would do a seminar with me on ACL injury prevention, because that is, I mean, it was, I I don't know if it's as big today, uh, the whole statistics of, I don't know the statistics anymore, right? I think back in the day, it was five to six times more likely. I don't know if that's changed. I don't see as much of it as I used to, like ACL injury prevention for female athletes. I don't see it as much. Um, But there was a lot of it going around when I was doing it. And so, and a lot of people were doing it, but no one was doing it like this. Um, they were – no one was doing it with a, the combo of a trainer that's trying to prevent injuries from the get-go and then the, the orthopedic surgeon who kind of had the knowledge of, you know, why this happens and everything like that. Um, but he also had a really good reputation, so he put it out to his people. I put it out to mine. There was different clubs that he was involved in. And we ran this seminar together for, I think, close to eight years. We did it every spring. It was me. I did 30 minutes. He did 30 minutes. We had anywhere from 80 to 100 and something people. Uh, Every time we did it, we always signed up kids from it. We got tons of parents involved. I mean, it was like one of the big things I did that kind of put me on the map as 
kind of like an expert, right? And I think that sometimes you can be known as an expert not by what you teach, right? I probably wouldn't have been known as an expert if I just said, hey, I'm teaching stuff about ACL injury prevention. But when I put my name on the poster with this guy, all of a sudden I was credible by association. And that is a very, very powerful thing is who you are associated with. And so my face being on the poster with him, we had physical posters and this is back in the day. There was, I don't, there was no landing page for this. There was literally like a PDF flyer. And the fact that we were getting the hundred people to come to a local seminar with PDF flyers, meaning the, this is how bad this was. The flyer was in like a attachment. So they had to like click the attachment. Like do you imagine doing this these days? No way. Like it has to go to a landing page and there's going to be opt-in. There was no opt-in for this. The opt-in was you had to call my gym to register a spot. Like that is how archaic this was. Um, And it wasn't that long ago. This is like 2009. I mean, it's not that long ago, but it was crazy. When I think back about it, it was really fun. Um, But literally on the flyer was like, call the number to reserve a spot. And we had a whole people calling in all the time. It was crazy. So. But but I think that's one of the big things. It's like the, there's so much power in you becoming this local celebrity authority figure. There's so much benefit that's going to come from that. And one of the things that can drive that is is your is association is who you're associated with. Um another and th- really through this relationship I got associated with there was a very high level lacrosse club and all of a sudden I did a partnership with them and they were known as the best club so now this really good club was sending all their athletes to us so it kind of put us on that map right so a lot of it led to other things but that's another example of association Another example of association is where I used to work at in San Diego, a guy named Todd Durkin, Fitness Quest 10. He, he, he was associated with Drew Brees and LaDainian Tomlinson, right? And so he was his their trainer. They happened to just crush it the year they started working with us. It was crazy. FedEx Air and FedEx Ground Players of the Year in the same year, right? And so, I mean, that was like by association, right? We were famous by and well-known by association, um, you know, from that. And so who you decide to do things with should be very strategic. Like, are there certain people that already have a reputation, that already are authority figures that can help you get to your own authority faster, Right. Sometimes we do things too slow. We kind of just try to build. You're going to post videos on social and do things. On, yeah, and, and, and that is all fine and good. But if you want to accelerate your level of authority in your community, association is a great way to do it. Here, Another example is how I kind of broke into the fitness business space. Right. I was a totally unknown person in the fitness business space. And. I got lucky and applied for a speaking spot at Perform Better and got selected. Like, it was like almost like a miracle. Like, no one got into the Perform Better tour. And for some reason, now that's a whole other story. But all of a sudden, by association, I was now somebody to pay attention to. Um, and and so the, the, the takeaway for you guys today is... Um, who in your community can you partner with to grow your business is a great question to ask yourself. But who can you partner with that when you partner with them can elevate your level of authority and celebrity status, right? Another example, I have so many of these. Another example was one of my clients was a guy named Jim Kramer. Um, and Jim Cramer is the host of Mad Money. Now, he wasn't a client for a very long time, but we taught him how to foam roll, and he came to our gym, he foam rolled, and, and he's all of a sudden, we foam rolled his hips, and his back felt better. 
And he's like, oh my God, he's like, this is the best place ever. And so he was blowing us up on Twitter. This is back in the day. He was blowing us up on Twitter saying there's a, there's a testimonial and it's funny. Um, I've memorized, I listened to the testimonial video so time because I couldn't believe someone this famous was able to give us a testimonial, but he's like, I went to Gabriel fitness because I never thought I would have a pain-free day again in my life. Three months later, I do not have back pain. I think it's mystical or I think it's, he says, I think it's magical and mystical, but it's really just Gabriel. And now when you see me on the show, I look a lot better than I used to. This is Jim Cramer from Mad Money, a world, world famous person that happened to live two towns over. A client of ours was friends of his and they brought him in. And, and it's just like, it, we didn't do much, but we did help him. Right. And then he's blowing us up on Twitter. So you, you can look it up now. If you go to YouTube and type Jim Cramer, Gabriel Fitness testimonial, you'll see it. It's an unbelievable testimonial. We used it for a really, really long time. Right. And so now, like all of a sudden we started, Kramer started. So all these business guys are kind of getting in, involved. It's like, so your association is, is key. So what I would do is like, you know, make your list, make a list of people who already has a really good reputation in your community. Um, now the second thing is you damn well have something that you can do for them. You can't just go to them and just say, Hey, right. Can you help me out? I want you to make me famous. No, that's not going to work. Right. I, so, so, so take a look at what I did for this doctor. Did I really do anything for him? Not necessarily, but I actually did. So check out what I did. The first thing was. I asked him if I could watch a surgery. Now, on the surface, that doesn't sound like anything that has to help, that's going to help him. But what does it do? It positions him as the expert. And it positions him as a person of authority that he gets to help. That's currency. For a guy like that that doesn't need money, he doesn't need more clients, he doesn't even want more patients. It's not like he's looking, this guy's all the patients he needs, right? But what is a person like that? How do they get value? Well, they get value from knowing that they're helping somebody. And I didn't do it in a way of, hey, can you send me clients? I did it in a way of, hey, I want your advice so you can help me. And he got something for that. What did Kramer get? Kramer got back pain relief. We did something for him, right? Um, the lacrosse guy got a solution for his athletes to get stronger and faster. I was able, that's something I was able to provide, you know, for them. But you got to start thinking about what, this is where joint ventures fail. Joint ventures fail when you try to think about who can I do a joint venture with that can get me a lot of clients. That is when they fail. The way they succeed is who can I do a joint venture with? that could end up making me famous faster that I can do something for, that I can provide value. And you lead with that. You don't lead with how you can help me. You lead with what can you do for that person. And you find something. If you got to make something up, I don't care what it is. Sometimes it's as basic as if there's a well-known physical therapist in your area. Sometimes it's as basic as you becoming a client. Or are you sending your clients to that person? But at the end of the day, you have to lead with how can I help this business, this organization, and that. And when you do it, just do it with the proper selection in mind of who can help enhance your level of status and authority faster. Because a lot of this game is about speed. Now, I'm all for habits and doing things consistently and slow cooking your success. But I will say this is sometimes putting things a little on a little jet fuel is going to be really, really helpful for you. And this is definitely one of them. So start to think about who you could partner with. I, I love talking about this stuff, man. I could talk about this. I love, you know, I own a marketing agency. We talk about websites, we talk about Facebook and all that stuff's well and good. But community marketing um absolutely is my jam. I love this stuff. And actually I am teaching a community marketing masterclass, uh, coming up. So as you're listening to this, there should be some kind of a link in the show notes or something that will tell you how to, um, that will tell you how to, uh, 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 
register for this thing. So just look in the show notes, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll tell you, but it's a community marketing masterclass. We're going to talk about joint ventures. I'm going to talk about referrals. I'm going to talk about social media um, and referrals. It, it's funny. There's so many mistakes that we make with referrals. Here's the first mistake. So I was working out today. This happened today. I was working out at my gym today and we rent space to a physical therapist. And there's a woman laying on the table that the guy's working on. There's two, there's two physical therapists and there's a woman laying on the table and there's another woman that the other guy's working with. And the one woman that had been there a bunch of times starts telling the other woman how she's hit the jackpot that she looked for every possible, um, she looked for every possible physical therapist. She saw a bunch of different ones and this is the best place. She's like, you've hit the jackpot. And the other woman's going like, oh, like, thank God. It's good to hear that. I was so skeptical coming in because I didn't know what physical therapy was all about and all that stuff. And they're going back and forth. And I'm just like thinking like nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. And what should that physical therapist do? Well, they should say, I'm so happy that you like it here. I'm so happy you've had success. Can you give us a Google review? Can you send us another patient? Do you have another? There should be, that should be a trigger to start a conversation. Instead, they kind of shrug it off and they smile. And they're like, oh, you're so nice. Oh, thanks a lot. But every day your gym clients, the clients at your gym, your gym clients, the clients at your gym are saying this stuff to you. They're talking about the transformations. They're talking about the stuff that you do great. They're talking about how you changed their life. And you just shrug it off and you say, oh, shucks. So we're going to talk about referrals. We're going to be talking about joint ventures. We're going to talk about social media. There's an ocean of people on your social media feeds right now that could become clients. You just don't know it. Anyone that likes a post is a potential client. Anyone that subscribes, not subscribes, anyone that follows your channel or becomes a follower or what do they do on Instagram? Yeah, follower. Um as a potential client, anyone that comments is a potential client. Like it's, so we should be looking at total social media totally differently. Um, and I'll be going over that, go over community events, how to structure community events and everything. But this stuff is like important. You can't like, just think like, Oh, I gotta get this website. No, I gotta get this Facebook and just rely on that stuff. I think you got to really rethink the, your efforts in community marketing and you have to have a presence in it and you probably need some help. It's probably, if you're doing it all on yourself, it's probably not going to get done. So you need to have some staff, some trainers to help you. But I'll be doing this um, coming up. Check out the dates of the event in the show notes. If you're listening to this and it's late, know that we record this stuff. And um, know that you'll, you, you'll be able to get access to it at some point. So even if... Like I'm recording this sometime in March. Even this is, if it's like, this is, you're listening to this and it's June, you know, 2024 uh, and you missed it, like just reach out to us and we'll be able to get that to you um, and get you the recording and get you the the value. Um, so I appreciate you guys listening to this podcast. I get so much feedback about this podcast and I'm super grateful for it. I love doing it. I'm sitting in my car right now waiting for my kids at jujitsu and, uh, it's a joy to be able to sit here and talk to you guys and give you guys some insights and you know, allow me to rehash some of my old, the old days of, you know, back in the day of, of running the gym and I'm, I still run a gym, just a little different situation now, but, uh, hopefully this was helpful and, uh, you go out and you align yourself with some other people that, um, are authority figures in your community so you can accelerate the speed at way, at which you become an authority uh, in your community. So hopefully I'll see you at the uh, Community Marketing Masterclass Live uh, coming up. Have, have a great day. Thanks.